Hello again, everybody. Welcome back. This is Chris Mackey, and this is your eighth official uh, tutorial on Honeybee Energy Simulation. And if you guys remember in the last one, we started working through zone level results out of our energy simulation um, for, uh, for my parents' house here and visualizing coloring zones, looking at hour-by-hour at hour results on charts. Um, but, uh, but yeah, but now in this one, we're going to look more at, at uh, surface level results because if you guys remember in the original, original simulation uh, outputs that we requested, we requested surface temperatures uh, for our building. Um, and, so, and so in this one, I actually at this point, for, just for this video, we're actually going to take all this zone level stuff that we worked with. Uh, I know, I know it's, it's nice stuff and it's okay, you can, you can save it in another file, but for now I'm just going to delete this all because we're going we're gonna to start with just surface stuff. So you guys remember that we had a something that read the zone level results from the, from the result file address. And we have a different one for, uh, whoops, for working through the surface level ones. So these surface temperatures that we want to now pull out of the result file address. And if you look under the nine honeybee energy energy tab uh, here, there is a specific one that says honeybee read EP surface result. And if you drag and drop that one onto your canvas, um, you'll see again, just like the other one, it takes the result file address. It has a norm by surf area, similar to the norm by floor area. Um, and um, and yeah, and these are all the possible, well, usual outputs that you can request for surfaces from here. So things, you can also like request things like energy flow through your envelope and stuff and see these things like that, like where, where, what parts of your building are you losing the most energy. Um, but for now, I'm just, I'm going to take the result file address and I know because we, you know, you got to imagine that this is working through a CSV file that has an, a value, a temperature value for every single hour of January for every single surface of our building. So this is going to take a, a long time to kind of parse through the result file here. So be patient with it if you're, if you're doing it on your own machine. Um, but you should see, you know, what it will do is that it should bring in the results for surface uh, indoor and outdoor temperature for us. Um, so I guess, because I know this one's going to take a while, I'm going to fast forward for the next few seconds. Okay, guys, that actually didn't take much longer at all. I was just like an extra five seconds on my machine. Uh, but okay, yeah, you see now it's this component is understood. We with the outputs we requested, we requested surface temperatures. Um, and if you guys pull up a panel to see what's in these, I mean, I'll warn you, it's actually it's kind of can be kind of big, so it's going to take a while when uh, when you hook up a panel. But what you get is similar to the zone outputs. You're getting a list of values for every single hour of January. And you get a, a header on top of the, the list that tells you what's, what's in there. So like, I mean, this is inner surface temperature for this, this specific surface, which is a wall. And, uh, and let's see, if I was to bring up a, a, a param viewer, I got to remember to pronounce that one correctly, um, a param viewer and look at what exactly I'm getting, getting out of this result, you'll see that it's a, it's a branch for every single surface. So it's like it's uh, almost 160 branches, one for every single surface of our house um, geometry, which actually, you know, just so you guys remember, if, you know, if you're kind of coming into this for new, this is our house geometry. Do so we get a list for every single wall, every single window, every single floor and, and roof and every, everything uh, in terms of its surface temperature? Um, so I mean, so it's a lot of data, but you can guys can begin to get a sense of what the power of this is and what you can do with it. So I'm going to use a kind of different tactic for this. We can't really like take all, you know, we don't want to do a, a whole explode tree on this. So I'm going to use a native grasshopper um, uh, branch, uh, tree branch uh, component. And if I search tree branch. Let's see, yeah, I want the one that retrieves all items in a specified data tree branch. So if I go and I hook up the surface indoor temp to that, then I can select an index. So this is selecting it, this is just one list now that we get for just this wall. And you guys know, I mean, you could look through this and I mean, it's obviously it's gonna it's gonna be hard to match everything uh, you know the the results of these lists to to the actual surfaces in your model. 
but um, I mean, I mean, understandably. But I have given you guys a few tools to, to be able to do this. So you can, as you can see, you can scroll through, and you're getting different surfaces here. Some, some, and, you know, it's at least telling you if it's glazing, if it's a window, or if it's a floor, or if it's a roof. So it's trying to give you some helpful information there. Um, but, but maybe it's, you know, it's you don't necessarily know what this surface is uh, until you, if you guys remember from the first video, there was a there was a whole video that I put together on labeling zone surfaces. So you can label actually the surfaces of this model with their names. So you can actually, you know, find the surface in there and understand what what this is actually referring to. But another way to actually to try and parse this huge block of data is that if you look under the energy energy tab here um, that there's a honeybee surface data based on type um, and, there, and this is the detailed one there's actually there's a simpler one but I'm going to show you guys this one so you can actually drag and drop this and if you hook up some surface data to this and you hook up those original honeybee zones that you that you put into your simulation um, you'll see it'll take a few seconds, but what it will actually do is it'll separate all those those that huge set of lists that are coming in in this in this result, and it will separate them based on which one's a, an interior wall, which one's an exterior wall, which one's a window, which one's a. So if you guys, yeah, let's see. Well, it's all right. It's understandably I guess taking some time on my system because it's 160 lists. There we go. Okay. But you guys can see now you're getting just the windows. So like just, just the values for the windows, um, just the values for the walls, or let's say you're only interested in roofs. Um, and you know, and this is this at this level, you know, we don't have too many roof surfaces. So if we were to use the explode tree with the roofs, you know, now we have something that's a bit more manageable, you know. So so you guys can scroll can can use this to, to understand, you know, or to at least start to parse through this big block of data and so you can kind of understand what's going on in the model. And you guys know that you can, I mean, you already saw in the last one, we plotted these results on the 3D chart. Um, you know, you can do things like if we pull out one of these branches, um, you can do the same sort of separate data. I mean, you, all right, you guys already saw this in the last one. And thank you guys, by the way, for sitting through that because I know it was a long one, um, a long video. But I know I, I kind of got excited myself with just, you know, because now, now we're getting to the point where I really can show you guys what's going on in the model. Um, and uh, and but you see like okay you get the average surface temperature in the month of January for that surface is is 14 and it's slightly different for that one and that one and you know and so you can kind of start to compare these things and, and parse through them um, so that's 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 one way of going through this data um, but now I mean just like we could color zones based on, on on results we can also color the surfaces of this model based on on these temperatures so let's say uh, all right we'll move this kind of up up to the side. And I'm going to whoops, I'm going to bring that with it. Um, I'm going to grab now. If you look under honeybee and under the energy energy part again, this last part here, there is a color surfaces based on EP result. So I can drag and drop this onto the canvas. And let's say let's say actually I just want to look at just want to color the walls and compare them with each other. Um, so you can grab you have to grab your honeybee zones that you plugged into your simulation from before. And again, when you first connect them up, it's going to copy some data to your memory. But you know, it's just doing that to make things quicker later. But just be a little bit patient the first time you connect up honeybee zones to this this surface color. Um, and you see that. Well, I'll, go, I'll kind of tell you guys right off the bat right now if I bring this up. So you can hook up. You can hook up all surface temperatures for all the zones, or you can just hook up one of these sets of groups. So let's say you want to compare the surface temperature, the interior surface temperature of the walls to one another. You could hook that up there, and before I run it, I'm going to turn the preview off of these things of of our of what our our zones look like. And if I set this to true, you guys will see what comes out of this after a few seconds is that you'll get just the walls colored on based on their average January surface temperature because we ran the simulation for January. Um, and oh, oh, actually, I didn't even realize this, but the preview is off here. Uh, I guess usually we try and leave our preview on in this, but if I turn the preview on, there we go. That looks like something nice. So you get a legend that shows your average surface temperature in January is ranging from 18 to, to, to roughly 16 uh, Celsius. Um, and you can see, okay, understandably, the southernmost walls are, tend to be the warmest in terms of their interior surface temperature, which is, which is something pretty cool. Like, that's starting to make sense. Um, but let's see. I mean, we could also get this to look pretty cooler, and you guys will, will come up with your own ways of, of formatting this. But I would kind of like to take, because I, I give you the surface B reps here and the surface colors. 
And now, actually, I'll turn the preview back off on this. I guess it wasn't too long that I kept it like that. And now I'm getting some cool, like, transparency effects. Uh, and so I'll hook up the legend and the wireframe to another one. I mean, you guys remember I, I did this from the, from the zones one, uh, from the color zones uh, set of defaults. But so, yeah, so now I'm, you know, I kind of like it this way. I'm starting to get a sense of it. But you could also, let's say I can take all the surface temperatures of all the, all of the surfaces. And then, you know, then we'll see, we'll get a comparison over the whole building. So you guys can see, okay, well, the walls have this big variation in interior surface temperature, but the windows are just really cold in January. And, you know, no one's really probably going to really want to be next to these windows if they're, if they're so cold. If they're, wow, if they're 11 Celsius, you know, people are going to, probably tend to stay away from them. And so you guys can start to get an argument that like, okay, maybe we don't want so many windows if we're going to make people very cold inside of our building. Um, and uh, and actually, all right, well now, now you guys get a sense of sort of, of how this, this, this color surface works. And I'm going to show you guys something. I mean, the latest release of Honeybee doesn't necessarily uh, have, well, the, the one that's officially on the, the link doesn't have this. But I'll show you guys a quick treat right now. I mean, since, I guess, let me just check. I guess we have a little extra time. Yeah, all right. If you guys, you guys feel free to stop the video now. But I'm going to show you that you can actually make a radiant temperature map of your building if you wanted to. I'm going to turn the preview off on that. And we have this cool new workflow that I've been working on now. So if you calculate a sort of view factor, uh, uh, you see, like essentially of your of a bunch of points in your zones, uh, to to uh, to the various different surfaces of of your of your zones, um, you can actually create a radiant temperature map and an MRT map over your building, and you can use this to start to to see uh, you know what what places end up being on average colder than others. Um, so you can see at the start, it's kind of copying a lot of data. And again, like feel free to fast forward through this part, guys. I showed you like the most important things where you could really like scroll through the surface results and understand what's happening. But this is just some like some like uh, start stuff at the edge now. Um, but actually, all right, I'm gonna fast. Oh no, no need to fast forward. All right, it just took a few seconds there while I was just copying some of the zone data. And, uh, and what this essentially, I mean, I'll turn the preview on in this too, because it's weird that we leave that off. But, um, but this will essentially allow you to set up if we select a, ah, gosh, all right, it's still, it's still, well, the thing is, okay, I see what it's saying. Yeah, so it's showing you that it's actually making this grid over our building, which is, wow, that is a very fine grid. I don't think we need to run something that detailed, especially for, for a sh kind of hopefully short video like this. So let's see, I'm gonna take a grid size of maybe of like one meter, so quotation marks and then one. So it's kind of auto sizing it based on our zones there, but I think, yeah, I think we should do something very, very coarse um, for our purposes. All right, yeah, so that's, that's a little bit better. And then the distance from floor, I mean, that seems like a good one. That's roughly a distance of a standing, standing person. Um, and I think we'll leave everything else as a default, except that it's useful to set this calculation to true. The, sorry, the, par the parallel of this calculation to true if you don't have too many other things going on in your system. Um, and then, okay, maybe, maybe actually, whoops, all right. And maybe, yeah, maybe we should really make it, all right, I, I want you guys to be able to see something. All right, so I'm going to set this to true now, and I'm going to fast forward. But what it's going to do is it's going to do a view factor calculation of from each of these points to all the other, other sur surfaces in the model. And I'm going to fast forward right now. Okay, actually, wow, that was a much faster simulation than I realized. Um, all right, so that's done, and um, like, thanks to the parallel, I guess. Um, and now we can take, we get out of this view factors from these points to all the different surfaces. Um, and we can use these in another, another pretty cool component that can make an indoor temperature map. Um, and so we can take something like, uh, so, so we take the, sorry, the view factor mesh, and plug it into there. We take the test points, and we take the zone surface names, um, and uh, and then we just we need an indoor temperature, which is exactly what we've got here for, that we've imported the results here, and uh, and now all we have to do is just run this baby, and you'll see uh, it'll just essentially do a multiplication of those view factors, and it's going to produce a radiant temperature map over our building. Uh, and you can see it's a very coarse resolution because I'm running it for um, for for 
for uh, you know uh, just this this quick presentation. But let's see. I mean, you, you guys will probably have a way of uh, you know of, in, in which you want to preview these things. So I'm going to set the wireframe to to be. Oh, I'll just copy this black swatch over here, so we get to see that. And you know, and maybe we'll plug in the uh, the legend also to this, so we see that in black. And so I mean, so this is the average indoor indoor temperature over the month of January. You can run it for a much higher resolution. You get a nice smoother gradient, but you can also just like in the other other um, uh, components where you can scroll through step by step. You can also do that here too. So you can see at like 5 a.m. what you know. People don't necessarily like to be in the close to these windows that are pretty cold, um, and you know you probably want to fix the legend part too because it's this legend is just going to adjust. But you can see as you get later in the day and you start scrolling through it, that temperature is going up, and the different parts of the building that are colder or warmer are changing, and you can kind of get a sense of then where occupants would want to be in your building at different times. So all right, so you guys get a sense of all the, the cool stuff that you can do and that and you bring in these surface results. Thank you again for sitting through a long one if you made it all the way to here. In the next video, guys, now you've completed essentially, you, got, you guys have a basic understanding of how to set up a model and how to understand the results of it. And the rest of this whole series is going to be devoted to changing the, the assumptions that, that you know, were put into place when we set up this model so that you can really get something that you guys can trust is close to your real building. So thanks guys for watching here. You've got you've made it to a milestone in this in this series, and uh, and uh, I'm looking forward to to seeing you guys in the in the in the next few few series.